Listen, Satan has a plot, but God always has a plan. Do you know what God's plan was? God was not worried about any void in heaven. Do you know what God's plan was? I want you to watch now. Look what it says. Faith I live by page 114. It says those who walk even as what? Christ walk will see with Christ the travail of his and be heaven will what talk to me somebody heaven will triumph it says for the vacancies made in heaven by the fall of Satan and his angels will be what talk to me filled by the redeemed of the Lord Satan said look if you kick the angels out of heaven all of us Look, you can't do that because there'll be a void in heaven. And God says, no, it won't. Because I have a plan of what? Redemption. Now, my brothers and sisters, that means that you and I have been destined to take the place of Satan and his angels. Do you know that this is why God has been allowing the world to run for nearly 6,000 years? Because he has to make up the number to get it right. And when that number is made up, it's going to be cut short and it's going to happen. Guess what? On time. Now watch. Do you want to be among this group? Yes or no? Yes. You know, this is why Satan hates you. He said, oh, they're going to take my place? But now I got to stop him. No question. What was the reason why there was no more place? Now somebody said, well, that's not in the Bible. That prophet said that, but it's not in the Bible. Is that in the Bible? Revelation 12 says that there was no more place. place. But then Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? In my father's house are? Many if it were not so, I would have? Told you. I go to prepare a place. What place was that? This place. That same place that Satan lost. I go to prepare a place for you. For us. But now, question. What made Satan lose his place? Go to Ezekiel 28. Go to Ezekiel 28. You should be there. You're there, amen? In Ezekiel 28, we're going to find out there was one thing that made Satan lose his place, and you can say it in one word. Ezekiel 28, notice what the Bible says in verse 15. In Ezekiel 28, verse 15, verse 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that cometh. Verse 15 says, Thou was, what's the next word? Perfect, Perfect. how? In thy ways from the day that thy was created till what? Amen. What's God going to take out at the end of the day of atonement? Before the day of atonement ends, all their transgression. All their iniquities, all their sins. He's gonna take it, he's gonna take it out. And you, there's a reason. Now watch. So Satan was perfect until iniquity came. What is another name for iniquity? Let's continue to read it. Jump down to verse uh, uh, 16. It says, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with, talk to me, violence. When verse 16, Ezekiel 28, verse 16. And thou hast, what's the next word? Sinned. Sinned. Therefore, I will what? Cast thee as profane out of the mount, uh, mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Question, why was Satan cast out? Why was there no more place found for Satan in heaven? Why? Because of what? Sin. 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 So God says the sin problem caused Satan to be cast out. Did the Bible say that, yes or no? Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you a question now. Who's going to take his place? Who's going to take his place? The redeemed. The redeemed. By God's grace, you and I, right? Amen. Now I'm going to ask you a question now. But what if we're still sinning? If Satan lost his place because of one reason, God didn't stop liking Lucifer. God didn't stop liking Satan. God still loves him. But guess what? If Satan lost his place because of sin and the sinner... Is given Satan's place and he still has sin. What is Satan going to say at the end of the day of atonement if God does not bring us back to a sinless state? Satan will say, wait a minute. If they're going to take my place and they're still sinning, that's not fair. fair. And would he be right? Yes or no? Yes. He will be right. In fact, the plan of redemption has a yet broader and deeper purpose in the salvation of man. It was not for this alone that Christ came to the earth. It was not merely that the inhabitants of this little world might regard the law of God as it should be regarded, but it was to what, everybody? Vindicate the character of God before the universe. What does vindicate mean? Clear his name. Show him that he's just and true 
and right and fair. It says Satan, prophets in Kings 588, Satan has an accurate knowledge of the what, everybody? Sin. That he has tempted God's people to commit. And he urges his accusation, he's the accuser of the brother, against them, declaring that by their sins, they have forfeited the divine protection. Satan understands this. He understands the technicality. It says, and claiming that he has the right to do what? Destroy. He pronounces them just as deserving as what? himself of the exclusion from the favor of God. He said, look, they sin just like me. He says, are these, he says, the people who are to take what? My place in heaven and the place of the angels who united with me. They profess to obey the law of God, but they have what? But have they kept its precepts? So what would Satan say if Jesus came back at the end of 6,000 years, we don't have victory over sin, and now he says, I'm going to destroy you, Satan. He said, wait a minute, before you destroy me, Tell the universe how that's fair that you're going to destroy me because of sin, but you're going to save them. That is favoritism. You know what God would have to say? You're right. You know what would not be put on his head? Sin. You know what would not happen to Satan? And then what would he do? He would say to the angels, if the law cannot be kept, then the lawgiver is faulty. He made a law that could not be kept. That meant that his law is wrong. That means that his government is wrong. wrong. Then he would say, but guess what? My government is better. And just what he did to a third of the angels, he would persuade the masses of the unfallen worlds and he would take the entire universe with him in rebellion. And God, being fair to his name, would have to step back and say, you won. You won. You won by technicality. It's not over yet. Do you see this? So what has to happen in these closing hours of Earth's history among you and I, humanity, and the people of God on Earth, somebody must get what? Victory over sin. Are these, he says, the people who are to take my place in heaven and the place of the angels who are united with me? They profess to obey the law of God, but have they kept his precepts? Have they not been lovers of what? Self. More than lovers of God. Don't they love watching television? Don't they watch it more than they read their Bible? Don't they love thinking evil dogs? It says, look, have they not placed their own what? Interests above his service? Have they not loved what? The things of the world. Look at the sins that have marked their lives. And he knows every sin, even that we think nobody knows about. We think husband don't know about it, wife don't know about it, children don't know about it, parents don't know about it. But guess what? God knows. And Satan knows. Satan knows too. He marked the lives. Behold their what? Selfishness. Behold their malice, their hatred of one another. Will God what? Banish me and my angels from his presence and yet reward those who have been guilty of the same sins. Thou canst not do this, O Lord, in justice. Justice demands that sentence be pronounced against them. And you know what the sentence is? The wages of sin is what? Yeah. But you know what the priest is going to do? You know what the advocate is going to do? You know what the lawyer is going to do? He's going to say, but guess what? I have some evidence that shows there's a difference between you and them. What's the evidence, dear God? They surrendered to me to the place where I was able to take sin out of their lives. And in this earth, you tempted them with everything you had, even to the point of death. And they loved me so much, they would rather die than sin. They love me so much. You know what Satan would have to say? They were weaker than me. They were dumber than me. But yet they're wiser than me. And they have victory that I did not have. He will bow. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Then God will be able to finish his plan. Put the sin on his head. For a thousand years. Sin away into the wilderness. And then when he comes back at 7,000, Eden lost will be Eden restored. Sin and sinners will be no more. And it's going to happen on time. Amen. This is the plan. The honor of God. 
The honor of Christ is involved in the perfection, the sinless state of the character of his people. Can we do this by ourselves? Yes or no? We need Jesus. Our Savior was the majesty of heaven, the king of glory, but he laid aside his royal robe and kingly crown and clothed his divinity with what? Humanity. That he might know for himself the sufferings and temptations of human beings. He knows what we go through. He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. He came to be their surety, to overcome in their behalf, to live for them a, what everybody? But not so he can do it by himself. That through his, what? Power made available at the cross. They might obtain, what? The victory over sin. That will bring Jesus out of the most holy place. This will vindicate the character of God. This will allow Christ to come back and Satan's game plan is to stop this until the time, guess what? Runs, Runs out. out. Is he going to do it? Yes or no? Guess what? Do you know that none of us would have any hope if God didn't do this first part first though? Do you know that God can never brought us anywhere without first what? Let me illustrate. If I were to go out here in Richland and I were to get a house, I didn't buy it yet, but as I go out in Richland and I see this house, I look at this house and I see one and I say to myself, that house looks very nice. I think that would be a good one to buy. It's not too close to anyone. Has a nice little property there. This house is wonderful. But it has a little problems. The window is broken. The door has a few scratches on it. But the foundation is good. Got a nice little property with it. And nice uh, there. And I said I want to get it. And so you know what I said. I said you know what. I'm going to start fixing up this house. And all of a sudden I go to the house. And I start trying to fix up the house. And as I start trying to fix up the house, all of a sudden I hear a noise. Woo! Woo! What noise is that? Police. police. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden the police has his little lights on. And he comes over and he sees me in there. I've been fixing on it every night after work. And now all of a sudden as I'm fixing on the house, he puts his lights on. He says, sir, there's a sign there that says no trespassing. What are you doing here? I tell him, oh, I, I, I can answer that, officer. It's all right. I look at this house and I, I like it. And I'm going to fix it up and I'm going to buy it. You know what you say? You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say can and will be held against you. But officer, I'm going to buy it. You have the right to remain silent. You have one call and a lawyer. Why do you say that? Because you're breaking what? Law. Why? Because you're fixing up a house? Why are you breaking law? Trespassing. You're trespassing. It doesn't what? Belong, belong to you. Here. Listen to me. Do you understand something? That God can never fix us and bring us back to perfection, to a sinless state. He couldn't just come us and make the sinner sinless. He didn't have the right. Satan said it's not fair. The first thing that God had to do before he could bring us back to perfection was the first part of the plan. Wow. Buy the house. Make the purchase. And so guess what? Jesus came to this earth so that we could be what? Bought. He did it. Now we belong to him. Now the, the police can't say anything. You can go and fix it up. And you know what Jesus is doing? He's trying to fix us right now. Amen. There used to be a show called The Six Million Dollar Man. You ever remember that show? Steve Austin, astronaut. Oh, I used to like that show. And all of a sudden the man, when he was coming down from space, and as he came down, all of a sudden he's crashing. Almost died. He's down on the table now. Years ago, when, when the six million dollar man came out, that's more like a five billion dollar man now. That, man, that was a lot of money back then, you know. <laughs> so six million dollar man, that was supposed to be like five billion dollars. It was supposed to be like, but he's not down on the table. And all of a sudden, he's on the t they, they put the man on the table, and the man can barely breathe. He can barely live, and you hear the little voice, Steve Austin, astronaut, and then he starts talking back to him. And then all of a sudden, they said, "But we have the technology. We can rebuild him. We can make him stronger." We can make him faster. We can make him better than he was before. Can you imagine when Jesus saw man sin? We fell down. We were destroyed. But all of a sudden the Godhead in the council of peace said, don't worry. We have the technology, brother. We can rebuild him. Stronger. 
faster, better, so he can be victor, victorious over sin, Adam fall, but we can make him better than that. Now, with a $6 million man, you remember what happened? His eyes, he had the bionic eyes. He can, he can see a far distance. He jumped up. He could get stronger. He could, do, he could do everything at that time. This sinner is going to go where no man has gone before through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because of what Jesus did, he's going to change us. But guess what? We don't have much. Now, what we want to do in these last few minutes before I let you go home, we want to look at how much time you know, the Bible says, go to, go to Revelation. Let's just get ready to close. Go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Go in your Bible, Revelation 13. We see Satan's game plan is to wear out the clock. You're going to Revelation 13. Satan's game plan is to wear out the clock. Go to Revelation 13. And hold your thumb when you get to Revelation 13. Now, we know this now. Please, I want you to listen to this carefully and answer it. You have the pieces to the puzzle now from the Bible. You can understand this. Let's slow down. Let's, let's look at this. It says, Great Controversy 656. This is your homework. To read Great Controversy 656, it says for 6,000 years. How long? 6, the Great Controversy has been in progress. The Son of God and His heavenly messengers have been in conflict with the power of the evil one. To warn, what else? Enlighten and save the children of men. Now all have made their what? When they make their decisions at the end of what? 6,000 years. The wicked have fully united with Satan in his warfare against what? That's the war. When did, he, did the wicked fully unite with Satan? At the end of what? 6,000 6, years. years. It says the time has what? Come. Now when does the time come? At the end of what? 6,000 years. So now I'm going to ask you. The time has come for what? Now please. Thy way, O God, is in the so at the end of 6,000 years, if you understand the sanctuary, the time has come for something. I have faith in you now. Are you ready to answer? I believe you're going to make me happy. Please help us, Lord, as we bring these final points out. All right. Who is going to answer to me? At the end of 6,000 years, what will happen in the plan of God, in the great controversy, in the war? In the sanctuary of heaven, what will happen at the end of 6,000 years? Because it says at that time, the t it said that at the end of 6,000 years, the time has what? Time. Talk to me. The time has come for what? The time has come for what? That's right, I'm putting a gag on him. The time has come for what? Talk to me. What have what, what, what we been studying? What have we been studying? Talk to me. Been studying the sanctuary? Plan of redemption? So then the 6,000 years, come on, Smokey, Brother Smokey, tell me. In the 6,000 years, what's, what's happening? Talk to me. Now all I've made this, uh, and, but in the sanctuary, what, that's right, Jesus to come, but talk to me. Come to for what? What is he coming for? No, no, he's not coming for his people. Now, that's not, remember now, think about this. I want you to think. You got to think. You got to think. When Jesus came to the earth, what did he, what was the reason why he came to the earth? What, what, what was he doing when he came to the earth? What was the purpose? He had something to do, right? What was his work? He had to buy us, purchase us, bought us. Where did he do that? On the cross, throw in AD. So he was fulfilling the work of the sanctuary service inside. Now at the end of the sanctuary service, God has to bring us back to a sinless state. Why is he going to bring us back to a sinless state? What does he want from us? What does he want? Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin. So what does he want from us? So what did he purchase us? He, what did he want to get when he purchased? What did he want to get? Sins. Our sins. So he can take our sins away. What needs to be fixed? What messed us up? Sin. sin. So what would you have to remove to fix us? Sin. sin. So then he has to take away our sin, but he had to buy them first and suffer them first. He did all that. So now as we look at that, he started this process. Why does he want our sins? What's going to happen to them? What's he going to eventually do with those sins? Place them on the head of what? Do you know that it is not the hands of the priest that crushes the head of the scapegoat? It was not the hands of Satan that crushed Satan, that crushed Jesus. What caused Jesus' heel to be bruised? What caused him to die in humanity on the cross was not the snails in his hands. It was not the spear in his side. What caused Jesus to die? What was laid upon him? Sin. Whose sin? My sin. 
my sin. So what is going to cause the escape, if the sin caused the lamb to die, what's going to cause the scapegoat to die? Sin. sin. So how much sin must be placed upon the scapegoat for his head to be crushed? All, All. sin. What would happen if we hold on to our sin? To Nothing to crush the head of Satan. And so he would not die like that. He would take the controversy and try to win. That's his plan. He wants to keep the sin from him. Let me illustrate. I remember, and I, I was saying before, I, my wife and I, you remember I was telling you before when we were at a, a smaller place and we brought a garden, uh, brought a country place and we got a garden. And we put the garden in. And as we put the garden in, I tell you, I always like to look over the garden. I'm like a little child. When you plant the seed and you see the seed sprout, I love to see the seed sprout. You like to see that? When you see it coming up out of the ground, you can see life budding. And I told you about the time when, as I was out there looking one day, I saw what go into the garden? A serpent. A snake. And as that snake was in the garden, you know what I want to do? Someone says, well, what type of snake was it, Brother Bill? I said, look, the only good snake is a dead one. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to kill that thing. And so I came out, and I went out, and, and guess what I got? What's the best friend of a farmer who wants to kill a snake? Now, Brother Jimmy said that little switch, but I, had a, I, had a, I, I didn't try to switch. What I did, I had a shovel. And I got my shovel. And I came down, and guess where I was going for? You think I was going for a little tip of his tail? No. I want to trap his neck so I can crush his. I know how to kill him. And so I, I came down, and I stopped him right about where his neck is, and I stopped him on the ground, but it had been drizzling outside. What's happening to the ground? It's off. And so my uh, shovel stopped him, but I didn't kill him. The ground was soft beneath him. So I started pushing on a little bit to try to kind of saw us here free to kill him. But as I start pushing down, guess what started happening? Brother Bill, he starts sinking into the ground. And it's getting muddy. Now, the more I push down, the less of him I see, Brother Jimmy. <laughs> and I, you know, uh, to be safe, you want to be able to see where the serpent is. <laughs> so I, I stopped pushing down, and I kept him right here. I, I only see a little tail now coming back up. He's down, I can't fully see him. So I, I have him about right here. But I'm, I'm trapped now because I can't move. I can't push down anymore or he might get free and, and bite me. <laughs> I can't do anything else. So what do I need now? Help. And praise the Lord. I told you I had a wife Amen. and she wasn't a city wife. No. She was a country girl. Yes, brother smoke it. <laughs> so I call her wife. My honey, was like, honey. And I called her. I said, honey. And all of a sudden she came out the house. And she immediately, not like a city girl, but she immediately sized up the situation and she noticed I had the snake. And so I have several instruments, tools, and there was another shovel on the wall. And so I said, honey, shovel. And so she gave him the shovel. Now imagine if she took the shovel and just started saying, shovel! <laughs> and playing around, dancing around with the shovel. That wouldn't have been funny. You know? <laughs> so my, but when I said, honey, shovel! And she gave me the shovel. And immediately... I took the shovel, put one shovel underneath him, the other shovel on top of him, and crushed him on top of that shovel. And then, Brother Bill, I took my camera phone out and took a picture of him. I said, remember that, Satan. Your head is going to be what? Crush. That's tight, but soon it's going to be anti-tight. That's right. But now listen. When I did that, this is one of the reasons why God wants us out in the country. God said, this is an object lesson. The husband represents Christ, the priest. The church represents who, who? The woman, the wife. The wife represents the church. And all of a sudden, G Jesus in 31 AD started the crushing of Satan's head and stopped him. That's what I did with that first shovel. But I didn't finish the work. And all of a sudden, I needed help. And so I called for my wife, the church, to bring me something that could finish the work. And she came with the shovel. What did the shovel represent? Sin. He's going to have a church without spot, without wrinkle, without any such thing. But guess what? When Jesus is asking us to bring him his sin, you know what we're saying? Oh, Jesus, sin? <laughs> you want this? <laughs> and we're playing with sin right here on this earth. But if we can give Jesus our sin, you know what he'll do with it immediately? Take it and crush the head of Satan so the work can be finished. Do you see why we need to give him our sin, yes or no? Yes. All right, now watch. At the end of 6,000 years, the time has come. Now the event takes place foreshadowed in the last solemn service of the day of 
Then it quotes Leviticus 16, 21 that we've been reading. It says, in like manner, when the work of atonement in the heavenly sanctuary has been completed, then in the presence of God and heavenly angels and in the host of the redeemed, the sins of God's people will be placed upon Satan and he will be declared what, everybody? Yeah. Guilty of all the evil which he has caused them to commit. And as the what? Scapegoat was sent away into a land not inhabited, so Satan will be banished to this what? Desolate earth, the uninhabited and dreary how long? The revelator foretells the banishment of Satan in the condition of chaos and desolation to which the earth is to be reduced. That's where the battlefield is going to end on this earth. And he declares that this condition will exist for how long? We're going to be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles for a thousand years. When a thousand years is over and the Feast of Tabernacles is over, the plan of redemption is complete. He comes back to the earth and finishes the work and Satan and sinners are destroyed in hell fire. And then God makes a new heaven and a new earth. So at the end of 6,000 years, the time has come for Jesus to leave the, if he leaves the most holy place of the sanctuary in heaven, the war is over. But there's only one way he can leave and still win the war. In order to leave and win the war, what has to happen on earth? God's people must be brought to a sinless state where they have victory over sin. This is what Satan is trying to stop. Now watch what it says. Who's going to bring the scapegoat? Does the Bible say so? Where does the Bible say the fit man is going to bring the scapegoat? Where does the Bible say that? Leviticus 16. What verse? What verse? Now, see, now, now, you, know, you know I'm not going to let you get away with that. You got to look at it. Leviticus 16. What verse? You got to make sure you believe this, not because a man said it, but this is not man training institute, but what? Bible. So in Leviticus 16, it says very clearly in verse 20, last part, and shall send him away by the hand of a... I can't hear you. By the hand of a... We're looking at the last part of verse 21 of Leviticus 16. After the priest puts on him the sins, all of them, he sends them away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So question, who brings and takes away the scapegoat? Who does that? Fit, fit man. man. Now, I showed you last time, what does the word fit man mean? It comes from the word iti in Hebrew. It doesn't mean strong man. In the original language, it means what type of man? So a fit man is a man who comes how? And that means that the scapegoat has to be brought, not any time. The scapegoat has to be brought how? Awesome. On time. 6,000 years. It happens on time. The Bible says the same thing the prophet said. And it says it's going to happen just like God says. These types were fulfilled not only as to the event, but as to the... Time. So that meant that the type of the Day of Atonement has to happen on... Time. In like manner, the types which relate to the second advent must be fulfilled at the pointed out in the symbolic service. So when the priest in heaven, type, comes to the outer court, earth, that is a type of the second coming of what? That means that this has to happen on time. Now my question is, what is the time? 6,000 years. That's the time. He has to come out on time. 6,000 years. Now we're going to bring it to a close. How old is the earth? How old is the earth? Is that a good question? Yes or no? Yes. Good question? Revelation 13. Look what the Bible says in Revelation 13, verse 18. Revelation 13, verse 18. Revelation 13, verse 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding. What's the next word? So if we're going to preach the 30th message, we have to learn how to what? Count. We have to learn how to count. So we're going to test our counting right now. You ready? All right. How old is the earth? Now, do you know that all the world were basically unified until something called the theory of evolution? Almost all the earth, no matter what religion, no matter a person was scientific or not, almost all the world were basically united on how old the earth was before evolution. Anybody know what it was? A man by the name of Usher. Usher was an archbishop. He was a very well-respected man, well-respected scholar, theologian. He was also decorated and had a doctorate. He was, a, he was one of history's most famous historians. And he said the usher arrived at the year of creation being somewhere around 4004 B.C. and somewhere around October 23rd, usher uh, did based on this. Evolution overturned this. But you'll find out if you study this that the 6,000 year of the earth came between what years? 1997 and 10,004. Uh, not 10,000, 2004. 
That means that the earth has already been here for guess how long? 6,000 years. Someone says, what do you mean? You built all this great cock of time and all this great little time telling us this at one time, one time, one time. And then we've been here past 6,000 years. But that's not what it is. You remember now, the plan of redemption is 6,000 years and the plan of redemption was not set in motion at the beginning of the day of creation. Am I right? right. When did the plan of redemption get set in motion? Sin. The moment there was sin, there was a Savior. So the moment he sinned, that's when the plan was put into effect. That's why Adam didn't die immediately. So that, that tells me then the key is to find out when sin entered the world. But guess what? How long was Adam in Eden before he sinned? We don't know. So this means that we would never be able to use the 6,000 years to get the exact day. We would never be able to use it to get the exact day year but we would be able to use it to get the generation the bible says the day and hour know of no man but it says when you see this know that this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled so the same god that said we cannot know the day and hour of his coming or the end said we couldn't know the generation, generation. and so the question is not six thousand year but the six thousand year generation which leaves that generation. Now, we're going to find that out. Now, watch it now. We look at this. We open up. And we want to see what this is. We see the purpose of the sanctuary. We see the inspiration says that they will have to learn in a few months what it is taking others years to learn. They will also have much to what? Unlearn. You know, one of the things we have to unlearn? That we cannot know the final generation. People say, oh, you can't know that. You're a time setter. But Jesus says you must learn how to count. Now, in the plan of redemption, could they count until when they was going to be redeemed in the Old Testament. Yes or no? Yeah. You know what it was called? Go to Leviticus. Let me show you. Go to Leviticus 25. Just like in the New Testament, they were counting. In Leviticus 25, they could count until the year of release. God set it up in cycles of seven. Every seven years, there was a year of release. And they could count it. And there was also then seven of seven, called the Jubilee. So every 50 years was a time of Jubilee where all debts were removed. So a man in his life and God's plan would get out of debt Every life, it's a, no generation would come into a, on the scene in debt. God always had a plan to remove debt. But now let's go to Leviticus 25. I want to get into that right now. Because the Bible shows the solution to the problems that exist in the earth. Go to Leviticus 25. And look what the Bible says in Leviticus 25, beginning in verse, in Leviticus 25, beginning in verse 27. The Bible says, let's start in verse 23. Leviticus 25, verse 23 says, The land shall not be sold, how long? Forever. Leviticus 25, go to jump, jump down to verse 25. If thy brother be waxing poor and have sold away some of his possessions, and if any of his kin come to what? Redeem. Now, is the Bible just talking about this little time of the Jewish nation? What is the real purpose of this text? To unfold the plan of? Redeem. So that means that there's something really about this verse that's talking about the plan of what? Redeem. And we know that because he's talking about redeeming. Then shall he redeem that which his brother is sold. Now, watch what they were able to do as it related to redemption. Verse 26. Uh, and if the man have none to redeem it, and he himself be able to redeem it, verse 27 says, then let him what? Yeah. The years of the sale thereof. So he would be able to count unto the year that he would be what? Redeemed. The year he would be released. And what was how many? He would just count 49 years. Every 50th year, it was to take place. So if you read through this, this was showing us that the people of God should be able to number and come close to when they were getting ready to be released, redeemed, purchased, restored. Now, could we know the exact day and hour before probation closed? No. But what did he say we could know? The generation. So that's what we want to do. Now, when a doctor does it, there's no problem. Father, 28, given what? Months to live after being diagnosed with terminal cancer. Ever heard somebody, they went to a doctor, someone says you have cancer, you have a year left to live. Is that true? Yes. You know that the, the man doesn't go to the doctor and say, time setter! He understands the nature of the disease. disease. And inspiration says, time is almost finished and we have, what others have been years learning, we will have to learn in a what? I believe that. This person was told that and that's amazing that the physician is given the liberty of something that the minister is not able to do. But God wants us to understand this. Now we count this in 2020. I'm going to let you go home once we do this. 
in 2020, how close are we to the 6,000 year limit? Is that a good question? Yes. Are you ready? ready? Are you sure? Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding, let him count. count. Let's count. Let's count. Well, how are we going to count? Thy will, God, is in the? God does everything in cycles of seven. We know 6,000 on earth, 1,000 in heaven. Let's put this up here. Now, about how long was it? Now, what I'm going to do, so we understand, the sanctuary has how many places? Three, Three places. What's the first place? Out of court. What's the second place? Other place. What's the third place? Now, we can understand if we're going here. That means that you can divide the 6,000 years into how many parts? You can divide the 6,000 years into three parts. First part in the outer court, second part in the holy place, third part in the most holy place. And that will take us to the whole plan of redemption. The whole time from Genesis to Revelation, from beginning to end, from Alpha and Omega. Does it make sense? All right. When did the outer court work start? The moment there was sin, there was a sin. When did Adam sacrifice the first lamb? After he sinned. We read that in Genesis 3. So that meant that from the moment that Adam started the first sacrifices up until the death of Jesus on the cross, which was in 31. So the outer court, the first part, the outer court, the outer court was there for about 4,000 years. Then he moved into the holy place. What year? 31 A.D. How long did he remain in the holy place? From 31 A.D. to what? October 22nd? How long is that? Now they tell me in Richland, you know what they told me, Brother Bill, they say in Richland that there's some good math mathematicians. So, <laughs> so I'm going to test right now. So how long, how long from 31 AD to 1844? Because that's how long he was in the holy place. Now I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you, I'm testing you right now. 31 AD to 1844. How long is that? I'm looking at y'all. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> do the math. Now, I, want, I want to see it from you. Do it. Do it. Let me see what you got over there. Over 1,800, over 1800 years? 1875? Uh-uh. From no, look what we're doing. Let me, let, let, look, look what we're doing. That's right. 1844 is when Christ moved to the most holy place. He went in in 31 AD. So if we do the subtraction, we count. 4 minus 1 is what? 4 minus 1. Now, we, uh, we know that, right? So 4 minus 1 is what? 3. Four minus three. One. Then what do I do with eight? Drop. What do I do with the one? So how long was Christ in the holy place? Now that's exact. That's not about. That's exact. He was there from 31 AD exactly to 1844, October 22nd, exactly. No question. The rest, no question. So we know he was there in the holy place 1813 years. So how long was he in the most holy place? From 1844... Is he still in there right now? Has he come out? Yes, he's, still there. he's still there. What year are we in right now? 2020. This is not guesswork. This is exact. So now tell me, if we're doing the math and we're counting, uh, 1844, how much time was he in the most holy place? How much time was there? All right, let's do it together. 10. You can't do zero from four. So what do I have to do? I have to cross out. And I have to make that zero, then a 10. So now, what is 10 minus 4? 6. six. All right, now I have a 2. But I can't take 1 from 4, can I? So I have to do what? I have to cross out. And what do I get that from? I have to cross out. You, you follow what I'm saying? So you do that, and now watch, watch what happens. And I go to the 20. What do I make this now? I have to make that a 9. And I have to make this a 12. And what is 12 minus 4? 13, 12, 12 minus 4, 11, 10, 9, what? 8, good, all right, so now I have 8, then I have 0, but really I have, as it were here, this 9, what do I get now? One. I, get, I, I make that a 10, and I take 8 from, uh, uh, rather 9, excuse me, 9, and I get it now what? What do I have now? 100 and what? So we see now that Christ has been in 
and the most holy place. Now that, I'm sorry. Let me do this. Let me try to make it clear. Okay, it seems like I'm, I'm losing. Let me make it clear. That's not exactly right. Let me make it clear here. 218, let's do 18, 44. We take the 10 from here and we get the 6. We take this one, we got 12. We get the what? Uh, this will be 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. I got to make sure I can count. So it's, it's actually not 8, it's 7. Because you have to take, this is 10. This, as we come here, this becomes 10. Uh, as we were here, there we have there 9. And now because we took it from it, we know that we have to take it. And so this 10 as it was becomes that. And now I have this 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. And then this becomes 1. So it's actually 100 and what? 76. Now I have up here 175. Why do I have 175? Because the Day of Atonement is not the, the American year. So the seventh month is not July. You know, January, February, March, April. It's not July. The seventh month in Jewish time is not talking about the uh, summer. It's actually talking about, guess what part of the year? It's talking about the fall. Exactly. So this, the first month, which is Passover, was in the spring. That's why the Passover is in the spring. So that means that the fall of the month is when we come to this Jewish month. So once we get into the fall of 2020, we're not in the fall yet. But when we come to the fall of 2020, then we will reach 170, as this says here, we'll reach 100 and what? 76. But because we're not in the fall yet, it's still 175, but it will be 176 years. Now, if I add this up together, if I add about 4,000, if I add, what's the second number? 18 what? 13. And I add, what's the last number? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say... Uh, well, I'm going to say one, I'm, I'm putting 175 just for here, but 175, 176. We'll say it here, but it will really be 176. But if I, if I add all this up together, then I will get the, about the time that Jesus worked from out of court into 2020. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Are you following me? Yes. So now let's count it. All right. If I count this all up together now, what do I get from that? What is the number of all these added together from out of court to present? Let's do it together. Five plus three equals what? Eight. Eight. 7 plus 1 equals what? 8. 8, Eight plus 1 equals what? 9. 4 plus 1 equals what? 5. How long is that? 5,900 5, and what? Now question, is that 6,000? What does that tell me? Is that almost 6,000 though? So that tells me then that I'm nearing that 6,000 year limit and that this is the, guess what? Generation. Generation. That we don't, question, is that, is that, how much, what is this now? 598. Now, 6,000, that meant that, because someone says, oh, wait a minute. If we only have 5988, then let me add it up and see how much time we have left I could play around with anymore. Let me see. So I take 5, I say, oh, 5988. What would I get now and then? What would I get now? Oh, I get 12 big years. So I can play for 12 more years. No. But then we say, well, not really 12 because this is the same year it turns to fall. It will be six. So that really be 11 years. Someone may say. So they say, okay, so if 2020 we have 11 years, what will 2020 plus 11 be? 20 what? What have we been saying from the time we first started this series? That between 2020 and 2030 plus or minus, or minus that this tells us we're in the final generation. Now, this is not guesswork. This is exact. But somebody would say, oh, so then we have in 2031. But guess what? The Bible says that Jesus can cut short his work in righteousness, which means he does not have to wait until the limit. So this does not mean we have 11 years. And the 11-year period, we're going to find out that 2019 it was, it is almost 6,000. What it's really saying, watch now. Christ was standing at the point of transition between two economies, 4,000 years. This says the story of what? Now, where, what happened in Bethlehem? Now, watch what it says. The story of Bethlehem is an exhaustless thing. But Jesus accepted humanity when the race had been weakened by how long? 4,000 years. So it said when Jesus was born, it was 4,000. Now, wait a minute. I thought it said the cross was 4,000. But this says at his what? Birth, it was what? 4,000. Then this says, Cursing Conflict 32, Christ in the what? 
Now, is that, is that his birth? How many years has passed? 30 years. And so now it says, and in the wilderness of temptation stood in Adam's place to bear the test. He fell to endure. Here Christ overcame in the sinner's behalf. What's it say? 4,000 years. After Adam turned his back. Sin. How could it be 4,000 years at his birth, 4,000 years at his baptism, 4,000 years at the wilderness, 4,000 years at his death, unless it's not talking about the 4,000 year exactly, but it's talking about the 4,000 year generation. The life of Christ was how many generations? One generation. One generation. Generation. And we can see that. So this is the last what? Generation. And the last generation is simply the generation that reaches the 6,000 year limit, and we're told that we're in that limit, which means then that we don't have 11 years. You say, what do I mean by that? When Jesus comes, guess what we have until, not 11, 000, not 11 years, guess what we have until, not until Jesus comes, we have the same as it was in Esther's day. Guess what that was? Three. Let's close in Luke chapter 2. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Now I'm going to tell you something. If we understand what we're saying right here, right now, we can see that the issue is not 4,000 years, but the 4,000 year generation. And the issue is not 6,000 years, but the 6,000 year what? Generation. generation. Now question, are we living in a 6,000 year generation? Yes. That's so. Every, every 2,000 years, something has happened. In the first 2,000 years of human history, watch what happens. What happened? A flood came and destroyed the world. The entire world. At the second 2,000 years of human history, what happened? Jesus came to the world for the first time. So now if you put those two together, you'll understand what's going to happen at the last 2,000 years. First 2,000 years, the world came to an end. Second 2,000 years, Jesus came the first time. So what will come in the last 2,000 year period? Jesus will come the second time to bring the world to end like he did in the days of Noah. And it happened on time. How many, how many people on the earth when the world came to an end that first time? Seven billion people died in that flood. How many people, when we get ready to do this, we're going to follow out. We're approaching the exact same thing. Eden lost, Eden restored. The great plan of redemption results in fully bringing back the world into God's favor. All that was lost by sin is what? Restored. Not only man, but the earth. earth is redeemed to be the eternal abode of the obedient for how long? 6,000 years, Satan has struggled to maintain possession of the earth. Now God's original purpose in his creation is accomplished. Page 1 Prophets 342. So how long is Satan going to have control of the earth? 6,000 years. By the end of 6,000 years, God is going to take the grass back. He's going to come out of that most holy place and he's going to come out on time. Now my brothers and sisters, that tells me that guess what? This generation shall not pass. Heavenly Fathers, we bring this message to a close. Show us if ever there was a time to get ready, it's now. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. In Luke chapter 2, does anybody know what's happening in Luke chapter 2? In Luke, the second chapter, the greatest birth that ever took place is about to take place. Who's getting ready to be born on this earth in Luke chapter 2? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2 verse 1. Notice what the Bible says beginning in verse 1. It says in Luke chapter 2. In fact, let's go down to verse 3. Picking up and telling us what happened. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 3 it says, And all went to be taxed. Everyone where? Into his own city. Verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of what? Amen. Was there any prophecy concerning where Jesus had to be born? Where did he have to be born? In Bethlehem. About how much time? Was there a time? The Bible says he had to be born on time. What, did he have to be uh, baptized at the exact time? So that meant in order for him to be baptized at 30 years old in, 31, uh, in 27 AD, he had to be born at a specific what? That's why Galatians says in the fullness of time, God sent his son and Jesus was born. Now question, as he's getting ready to be born, where did Jesus live? Or rather, where did Joseph and Mary live before his birth? Where did they live? Nazareth. Nazareth. Now, 
would a woman who is pregnant want to leave Nazareth when she's almost getting ready to be delivered? You know, they didn't have the, the, these smooth cars today and the luxury cars. They were on a donkey. And guess how the roads were? They're on the donkey. You know how they say in the storybook, clumpity, 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 clumpity. <laughs> now, if you feel that, a woman who's pregnant, what's that going to do? Does that feel comfortable or uncomfortable? So a woman who's pregnant is not going to want to do that. So naturally, where would Jesus have been born in the natural order of things? Nazareth. In Nazareth of Galilee. But the prophecy says that he has to be born in the 4,000 year generation. Guess where he had to be born? In Bethlehem. Are you following? Yes. Verse 4 says, uh, verse 5 says, and, he, and to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being what? Great, Great with child. And so it was that while they were in there, the days were what? Accomplished. They say she should be delivered. Question. If she would not naturally have gone there, what made her go there just before the birth of Jesus so that Jesus could be born at the right place at the right time? What happened to make Jesus be born at the right place at the right time? Look at verse 1. Do you see how the Bible fits together? Look at Luke chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out. Talk to me somebody. A what did Esther have in too? A now listen. That decree caused Jesus to be born at the right place at the right time. So just before the 4,000 year period, something happened on the earth that made prophecy fulfilled on time. Who passed the decree? Caesar Augustus. Who gave Caesar authority to pass that decree? What empire? What kingdom? Rome. Who was Rome at that time? The world's great superpower the only superpower at that time passed a decree just before the 4,000 year generation to show that the 4,000 years here the greatest evidence that the 4,000 year had run out for the birth of Christ was that decree that was passed but guess what history will be Repeated. there's nothing new under the Sun. it won't be Rome this time who is the greatest superpower today so just before the 6,000 year period, what will be the greatest evidence that the 6,000 years has run out? A decree. A decree. What decree? Watch it now. The great agency of are combining their forces, consolidating and strengthening their forces for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be what? Do you see the cash society accelerating? Rapid. Fast. It's the final movements will be rapid ones, but we should say final movements not will be. Final movements are. are rapid ones. Watch what this says. By, let's read this together. By, what's the next two words? The decree. The decree. Enforcing the institution of the, the what is the institution of the papacy? Sunday. So what decree is this? Sunday law decree. It says, by the decree and enforce the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation will disconnect herself how? Fully. So the national son in law will do something. When Protestantism shall stretch forth her hand across the gulf to grasp hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to grasp hands with what, everybody? Fully. When under the influence of this threefold union, does that sound familiar? Dragon, beast, and a false prophet just before the battle of Armageddon, that three-four union. It says, when under the influence of this three-four union, our country, America, shall repudiate every principle of its what? So just before the 6,000 years in the Sunday law, what should we see happening to the Constitution? Changes. What do we see happening right now? Changes. It says, and a constitution of a Protestant and Republican government and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and illusions, then we may, no. in other words, to cut it short, when the Sunday law decree is passed, then we may what? No. That the time has come for the marvelous workings of Satan. Another study. And that the end, the end is near. The end of what is near? The end of 6,000 years. years. The limit. 
for Christ to come out of the most holy place. The end is near, and we're told that when we see these things, we should know it, that this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Now, guess what? 20 or 20, guess what? We are that generation. Now, if this is so, we should be watching that decree. It says, the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy is this, uh, this apostasy may be assigned to us that the Amen. limit of God's forbearance is what was the limit in Esther's day? The decree. What was the limit of 4,000 years in Christ's day? The decree. What's the limit down here today? The decree. Knowing that's the same thing. Showing us this. Because when that sunny law is passed on earth, something's getting ready to happen. Guess what? We don't have, guess what? We don't have 50 years. The deadly wound is almost here. Now, if this is so, we'll come back and show, show you this. If this is so, something should be happening. We should see something. It says, Pope Francis, the man who won over the world in what? Why did this Pope come on the scene when he did? Is there a reason for it? It's because, guess what? It's time. This Pope is different. Why is it happening now? Because of the great clock up. Something has to happen to put Jesus at the right place at the right. And that decree, the Sunday law decree, is going to do something. We have to study and find out what is going to do it. It says, uh, George Bergoglio, the first what? Why in the world? is the first openly professed Jesuit Pope come on the scene now in this generation because this is what? This is the time. Red clock of time is here. There's a relationship between the Pope, the deadly wound, the sunny law, and the day of... It means something. We're going to show you what it means when David told me. Why is it happening now? Because of the great clock of... The Pope Francis to become the first Pope to address what? Did he do so? Yes or no? How many other Popes did that? How many other generations is this happening? Why is it happening in this generation? Because this generation shall not. Pass. Now listen to me. Someone says, well, popes have come to America before. Don't you know? Other popes have come to America before, but no pope has ever come to Congress. Now what happens in Congress? Laws. Decrees. Laws. We're going to find out that when he came to Congress, you know what he did? He impregnated America. Now when a man impregnates a woman, you don't always know immediately what happened. It takes, guess what? And time will tell. And we're going to see that that boat. And if you had, you know, after a while, a woman starts feeling strange. And things don't seem ordinary anymore. And she recognizes, I want to test now. And what does she get sometimes? She goes to the doctor. An ultrasound. Let me tell you something. If you want to have a prophetic ultrasound to know if the Pope was impregnated in Congress, all you got to do is look at prophecy. And you'll find that there's something moving in the prophetic belly of America. This is what we see, the bubbling. You know, you know, this rumbling that's going around, this revolution that we see is part of this. First came. Now, immediately after he came to America, anybody know the, uh, uh, the month he came to America? In, in 20, anybody know the year? Anybody know the year? 2015. Anybody know the month? September. Now, what happened in 2015 in the summer just before that fall event? What happened... Sister Carleen, what happened? Now, same, now, sex <laughs> same sex marriage. Now, why? That is the first what? Twin. Marriage and the Sabbath go together. Counterfeit marriage and counterfeit Sabbath go together. And so the first counterfeit Sabbath born, 2015, and immediately Pope comes to Congress for the second twin to be impregnated in America so that we can see a Sunday law decree. Why is it happening now? now? Because the 6,000 year time is almost over. Do you know that we have but a few months? And you know, it could happen plus or minus. That means it could happen a little bit. It could happen right now. We have but a few short months at the most to a few short years. We have to say, dear God, it's time to get sin where? Out of my life. I need a relationship with Jesus, such as I never had before. Does it make sense, yes or no? Yes. Do you see why now, because of this great clock of time, and the Day of Atonement is going to come to the end, because we want to find out that Sunday law decree has to come before this. Why 2015? We talked about this. And then all of a sudden, who comes on the scene in 2016? A new president. Who comes on the scene? Mr. Trump. What did he say? Make America what? And what happened in the social condition of America as a result of this presidency, whether you like it or not, you could be for him or against him. That's not even my issue. I'm not in politics. But I'll tell you this, I'm in prophecy. And I know this, that whether we're for him or against him, this presidency, and everyone would have to agree, 
has created the greatest division in America has ever seen. Civil war imminent. This is the sign just before a nation doesn't stand. It's the sign just before a nation does what? Collapse. Collapses. Just before it falls. That's what uh, Nebuchadnezzar said. And, but these two men have never met each other, have they? Can we put the pieces of the puzzle together? Yes. You, what's the picture? St. George. How much time? Years. How much on earth? So if you put this piece together, it's almost over. What will we expect to see just before the 6,000 year period in the beginning of the end? What will we expect to see? Civil war. What do we see right now? Civil war. civil war just before the time of trouble. What do we see right now? And guess what they say? When they look at the civil war, it says they could be a real, this could be a reliable indicator that the, the looming instability is set to peak in the years around what? You know what that tells me? That around 2020, that I've now entered into the arena of the 6,000 year generation. This is the beginning of the end. What do we need? Jesus. And you're gonna find that the same thing that caused Jesus to be born in a manger is the same reason why you and I will be lost today. You know what caused Jesus to be born in the manger? Luke 2, verse 7. What's the Bible saying in verse 7? And she brought forth what? Her firstborn son. And wrapped him how? In swaddling clothes. And laid him where? In a manger. Why? Because there was no room. You know why we'll be lost? Because we won't make room in our hearts for Jesus. I want to make room for him. What do you say? Amen. I want to make time for him. We need to pray and study like we've never studied before. Amen? Amen. Homework. What? How many pieces of furniture? No, don't answer. How many pieces of furniture? I want you to write that now. What are the names of those furniture? You can have supporting texts for them. If you look at your book, Crossing a Shadow, you'll find all six of the pieces with many texts. There's a chapter given to every one of the pieces of furniture in the Crossing a Shadow, uh, your books that we gave you. So go to that book in the Crossing a Shadow. Go to your Bible. Make sure you find it. Find the, the number, the names, where they belong, out of court, holy place, most holy place. And then we'll come back together and we'll pick up there and understand why is this so important? Because see, when the Sunday law passes on earth, something happens, guess where? In heaven. We need to find out what it means. Why is this? What, do you know? Listen, when the Son of Law passes on earth, it's going to be too late for seven Adventists to get ready. And that's only a few months away. If Jesus comes at 6,000, that means that the Son of Law has to happen prior to 6,000. That means the Son of Law can happen when? So what we are watching is the final moments before the decree. But when the decree is passed, it's too late to get and we need to find out why. We need to find out, well, what do we need to be doing so that we can get ready? Because guess what? I need sin out of my life through Jesus Christ. And the greatest thing I can do first is, is I study is to say, Lord, I want to start making room in my heart. You know, I want you to ask the Lord, what's in my heart that needs to come out? What's in my what? What's in my heart that needs to come out What's in my life that needs to come out? And as we talk to God, God's going to tell us many things. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says or does. If Jesus tells us to take something out, you know what we need to do? Take it out. It's time to cleanse these temples so that Jesus can live in us forever. He's standing at the door. And guess what he's doing? I want to let him in. What do you say? Amen. Is that your desire this evening, this morning, this afternoon? Let's pray and ask the Lord. That's your desire. Would you reverently join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we have counted and we see that the evidence is on the wall. The handwriting is here. The 6,000 year limit is almost reached. We've counted, Lord, 
We see this as the generation. No other generation has been here. 2020 indeed is the beginning of the end. And Lord, we're not ready. Not one of us listening, looking, right here in this room. We're not ready. But Lord, you can get us ready. This is the work of you, our great high priest. And Lord, you've already bought us so that you can remake us better than we was before. I pause this prayer. There's someone here this morning that says, Lord, I want him to remake me. If that's your desire, just raise your hand. Lord, I want to remake me. Remake me. Make me like Jesus. Make me the friend of God. Make me a, a missionary, a soul winner that I can reach others. Heavenly Father, you see the lifted hands. We're lifting our hands because we cannot bring ourselves back to perfection. We cannot make ourselves have victory over sin. We need a priest that can give us power that can help us to know you and love you, that we'll rather die than sin because we love you so much. Help us to make room for you this week. And if that means cut off the television, let's cut it off so that we can give you, Lord, more time. You see our hands? Please help us, Lord. Be with those missing members that are here. Be with Sister Minnie, who is taking care of her family. Be with all the rest, Lord, and help us and bring us back next week, we pray, that we may go further to be a part of your team to finish this work, for the whole universe is at stake. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.